Jimmy Farewell Youth. Alright, today's the day. I've put this project off long enough. Took down the awnings. Hello, awnings. Look at how dirty they are, guys. I don't know if you remember last year when I moved in, they were worse than this, and I pressure washed the whole thing, and they look good. So it looked like that would have been an annual project anyway. I got my lumber, took down the awnings. I moved the wire that was in the way right about there. I just moved it up and over right there for my solar panels. Make sure they don't get blown away in a windstorm. And uh, now I'm going to be able to put what I need to put up there and not have anything in the way. Oh, I got lumber. I have hardware. There's more lumber out there, 16 foot, two by sixes uh, for the header. And we're going to get this project underway. Just waiting for my friend Jeff to come over. Jeffrey. And uh, hey, look at that. Our marigolds. We grew a bunch of marigolds. Got a bunch out in the garden. But those are the first two flowers we got. In any event, we're going to uh, get started on this project. And hopefully we get the bones up today and I can take care of the rest. I just, guys, I'm just a little insecure when it comes to building things. Especially when it comes to building it on my house. It's got to look way better than it would, you know, if I'm doing it off-grid acres or just building it off the side of my garage like a lean-to. And frankly, I just need a little backup, a little support, and uh, somebody that's got a little knowledge, too. So, thank you, Jeffrey. Well, happy Father's Day, y'all. I'm putting up, putting up the plywood there. That's how far we got, so, we've gotten so far. And... Um, I'll probably try to get all the plywood up there tonight, or the OSB board today. And then I'm going to put tar paper down over the top of that. The metal should be done. I'll probably pick that up tomorrow and screw that on there. And then phase one is done. Phase two is going to be, you know, the finish work. i got to put a ceiling in underneath there to finish it off. Uh, soffit. Um, i got to box in this, this bottom part because we measured wrong. So instead of putting the joists across the top, or the rafters across the top header, um, we're going to have to box in that bottom part and then gutter and paint and we should be good to go but I'm happy with it so far thanks Jeffrey well there it is with the OSB up on there I got to make a couple of changes not everything went together exactly right like I expected it to but I, let's face it I didn't expect it to go together exactly right but I only have two screws in each sheet of ply or each sheet of OSB anyway uh, right now well, just because I'm sweating my ass off and it's 96 degrees out and I don't feel like doing this anymore. But there it is. We got the rafter hangers in there. This is all going to be covered when it's done. The underside, we're going to finish it off so it looks good. I got to cut off probably, I'd say, six or eight inches off of the bottom here so I can box it in. And, well, actually, it's going to be closer to 8 inches when i got to box it in. And then I'm going to finish it off with some one by just like that piece has there, and then put gutter across it. And we're happy with it. We don't think it makes the house look weird at all. As a matter of fact, it makes it look more finished. It feels, I, I don't know, I like the feel of it. I like when you walk in here, it feels enclosed. It makes the house seem bigger, I guess. Cool. What in the world is that thing? I mean, it's creepy looking but strangely beautiful at the same time it looks like it molted and what it's kind of perched on there is its old shell if anyone knows what that is chime in in the comments it's pretty cool man i've been waiting for this stuff you know living out in the country especially listen you can get bugs anywhere but living out in the country especially i don't know how i spray the inside and outside of the house but we still get bugs in here especially flying bugs and um, I bought this electric, electric mosquito killer. It's an LED light. And we're going to see how good this thing works. And if it works well, I'll put a link in the description. But we're going to give it a shot. And uh, this is an indoor mosquito killer. But I may also use it outdoor when it's not raining type thing. If I'm sitting out on the porch or something. I don't know. We're going we're gonna to check this out. Give it the once over. Stick around and I'll let you know how both of these go. But I'm excited to finally get them. There's the unit out of the box. I don't know what I was thinking I was going to be getting. I thought it was just something that would plug directly into a light socket. Like you've seen those Glade plugins, those sort of things. I guess maybe that's what I was thinking. But this is this is a real big, you know, nice size unit. And it does come with brackets if you want to hang it on the wall. Got a way to hang it. I don't know that I'm going to do that, at least not yet. Because we're in kind of a trial phase. So 
I'm going to uh, plug this in and probably leave it down on the floor or put it on a table. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll put it on a table. And it has an LED light, and apparently it's going to, uh, it's like those old school bug zappers, but it doesn't, it's not nearly as intrusive or uh, ugly or nasty looking as the old ones, you know, that had the light and zzz, electrocute them. But I think that's exactly what happens. I think they get drawn in and then get zapped. So we're going to look and uh, listen and just generally see how this works. All right, it found its way onto this table for now. You can see it lights up with that little kind of a purplish LED. Not, not ugly or anything like that. Let me just leave it there. It's got a pull chain. You can turn it on and off. Obviously, if you were hanging it on a wall, it would make more sense. And then right here, a little clean-out tray. So we're going to let this run for a day or two, and I'll show you if it really works. The proof will be right there in the tray if it does. Okay, guys, so I just wanted to give an update on this ComLife bug zapper. It works really well. Now, I had it inside the house. This is an indoor unit. And what I found is after a few days, I only had, you know, a handful of little critters in the tray. So I decided I wanted to bring it outside just to see if this thing really worked because I wasn't getting the results, I guess, inside. And the reason why is because I just don't have a ton of bugs floating around inside. But you obviously don't want to expose this to direct moisture, rain, that sort of thing, precipitation, because it's obviously not rated for outdoor. But... Because we have this nifty new covered porch that we're doing here. I set it up right over here. And I left it here all night long. And look, there's a little tree frog. He scared the hell out of me this morning when I came out to look at the tray. He jumped out. He knew where his bread was being buttered because he had a plethora of bugs coming in here. You can see all the bugs that fell outside the tray. They're right there dead. And I'll just show you the inside here. In the screen, there's a ton of bugs that haven't fallen down yet, but they're dead. They're zapped. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, I think you can. And then, of course, I'll show you the tray. There's a bunch of little... Oh, there's a couple that are still alive. Dead. Well, kind of zapped and almost dead in there, but I'll shut that back up. But ton of bugs inside there. Ton of bugs stuck in the screen that I'm sure will fall down with time. So I would rate this product a, a good deal. So if you have a covered porch or patio that you want to control your bugs check this out i'll put a link in the description all right gang i got big news for you on this deal if you guys are interested in this you can click on the link in the description below and they are running a flash deal it's 75 percent off so you can buy this which i think is 49 bucks guys uh is is the regular price on amazon you can get it through their ebay store in the link below for seven dollars and fifty cents i mean that that's a steal you got to pick one up if you've ever needed any kind of insect control. Pick one up, $7.50. Here's, here's the hook. It's only going to be today, the 26th, through the 29th, and they're only going to sell them to the first 15 people that buy them at that price for those three days. So 45 total at $7.50. So if you're one of the lucky 15 on either one of those three days, congratulations. Uh, otherwise, you can always check them out and pay full price. I don't know why you'd want to do that if you get a chance to get this smashing deal. So check it out. So the metal roof came in. We got the same color as the other roof that was over there. Overlapped it. Um, it obviously doesn't look like the exact same color because this roof's been up there a while. And it's dirty. This roof is nice, nice and clean. It's called Brandish Slate. I would have chosen a lighter color had we not already had that dark color there, but it is what it is. Let's see, so far it looks pretty good. I'll show you the underside here. What do you say, big guy? Glad uh, it's done. Looks good. Well, not quite done, but... Just about. Yeah. Okay, now we're obviously underneath this thing. And you see how I had to box in the very end over here? Yeah, we mismeasured and screwed something up, so that was our solution. It's real strong, this thing ain't moving. It's all tied in with rafter hangers, two by six with a 716 OSB, felt paper, and then metal. And after we paint the posts and anything that's gonna be exposed, cause I'm gonna put some one by eight, just like we have on that trim piece down there. And we hang gutter, I gotta figure out how to finish this off. So any and all uh, recommendations, Obviously, guys, I'm looking for it to look good, but I don't want to spend a ton of money doing it. You know my MO. So let me know what you think, the easiest way to cover it. I was hoping that we could just cover just the bottom piece 
of the, you know, sort of like we did on the top end with the OSB, cover the bottom of those rafters with uh, some type of soffit material or something like that. You know, preferably some type of beige color like that or white or whatever. We want to keep it light because we don't get a whole lot of sun. This is the north facing side and we don't get a whole lot of light on this end of the house and putting a roof over this like we have now is going to be letting less light in. So we want to have it re reflect as much light as possible and let it into the house. But, you know, the way that we constructed this and my friend Jeff helped me with it. Thank you, Jeffrey, again. We didn't do it in a way in which will allow me to do what I thought I'd be able to do. And it is what it is. I mean, stuff happens. Uh, neither one of us are professionals or amateurs at best. Uh, I'm a novice amateur. I would rank him higher than me, which is why I asked for his help. But, you know, we're not in the trade. So we got it done. It's covered. It's weathered in here, dried in. We're not going to have to worry about rain getting in. Uh, we're in good shape. Now I got some time to think about what I'm going to do and wait for your awesome comments and suggestions as to what y'all think I should do. I don't know how well you see that or not see it. I'll back up a little bit. Um, you might be able to see a little bow in the metal there towards the right side of your screen. I have not put all the screws in there. In fact, I only put three screws per side of panel. You know, three, three screws on the left side and then three screws on the overlap. Um, and the reason why I did that was twofold. Number one, it's hotter than Africa up there. I mean, like 90-something degrees already, and I'm sweating buckets. Number two, I wanted to get a chalk line and, you know, make them as straight as I could. While I was up there thinking about that, I noticed that whoever installed the metal next to it didn't do that. And it's kind of all over the place. And you know what? I never really noticed or cared, so I don't know. I don't know. I might as well get a chalk line. And that's it. That's it off-grid acre, so I'm going to pick that up probably tomorrow. And I'll get this done get the roof done. I just want to get it secured on there in case we get any wind. I didn't want it ripping up out of there. So that's what she looks like so far. Again, a one by eight is going to cover the front of that header. That's the word I was looking for, the header. Um, and then the gutter is going to go in front of that. So the idea is that it's going to look seamless with the roof that was already existing there. And guys, I got to tell you, I wasn't sure how this was going to look being added onto the house. You know, it's changing the the, the whole look of the front of the house. And I think it looks fine. I don't think it looks like it doesn't belong there. Matter of fact, part of me is thinking, gee, maybe I should go all the way across the front of the house. But again, the problem with that is the light, guys. I just don't get a lot of light in there. It's kind of dark already. And we're afraid that if we extend it all the way to the end of the house, it's going to look like a cave in there. And that's not what we're trying to do. So for right now, that's where we're at. I'm probably going to end the video and I'll show you in a future clip when this thing is all done. And that might be days, weeks, or who knows? How long away? Thanks for watching. Well, I've been a busy mamma jamma here. I put, it's basically like hardy plank cement board. Put that as the fascia. They didn't have one by eight lumber and the stuff that's down there underneath the existing gutter is one by eight. And Lowe's didn't have one by eight, they had one by six. But they did have eight and a quarter inch, like a hardy plank. It's a little thinner than the one by eight. And I just ripped it down to, uh, the same width, I guess, as the other board. And I put it up there, slammed it up there. I had to cobble together a piece there. I used some caulk and caulked over it. I think it looks pretty decent. And then I did this side. Now, you might notice the very top lip is not painted, and that's because I couldn't find my painter's tape, and I didn't want to get the underside of the roof with brown stain. You can understand that, of course. I painted the posts, and I caulked around you know, any gaps that were down there and painted that. It looks halfway decent. I also decided on what I was going to use for the underside of the ceiling, which uh, is unfinished so far, and it's going to be the soffit material. I've seen other videos where people have used this. I have a little concern about it sagging. I'm going to do what I can to uh, try to make sure that doesn't happen, but it may end up happening. After I bought this stuff, and by the way, I think the whole thing ended up costing me with a couple of J channels there, I think, it, or starter strips is what the guy told me to use, so one on each side. I think it ended up costing me about $80 for a roughly 8 by 16 covering, which is the cheapest stuff that I could find. Um, but I also started reading stuff after the fact, and a lot of people said, you know what, just buy metal and put metal up under there. It's going to cost roughly the same. It's never going to sag, I guess, is, is the argument for using it. They did say it's a little harder to work with and put up, but it's going to stay up and it's going to look better longer. So anyway, this is what I have. I bought it. I could take it back, but I don't think I'm going to. 
Uh, it was on clearance, roughly half price. It was regular $11 and something cents per sheet. That's 12 feet by a foot. I got it for $6.11, so a little less than half. Also down there, you can see I got my tartar gates in. I put them up yesterday by myself. It was a pain in the you-know-what, and I didn't get them exactly level. The first time I put them up, the, the left gate, as you're looking at it down there, I don't know how well you see it. I'll try to zoom in a bit. The left gate down there, there we go. Uh, it was about eight inches higher than the right gate. And so I did some adjustments and I got it about where I want it. But I think what I'm going to do is I got to screw in. Hello, focus guy. Thank you. I got to screw in the uh, bottom. Gosh, I don't even know what you call it, guys. I'm, I'm so out of it right now. I'm just, I'm wiped out. Working my ass off in this 98 degree weather. It's getting to me. I haven't eaten yet either. It's damn near 2.30 in the afternoon, so I better get something to eat and chill out for a little bit, get out of the sun, rehydrate. But um, I just got to screw in the bottom, whatever it's called, and uh, that should that should level it out a little better so it looks a little, little better finished. But I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I let Lily out this morning, and she, within minutes, found a way out, even though it's all fenced off. I don't know where she found a way out, but she did. And... Uh, you know, all was quiet. I was working for about 20, 30 minutes and I turn around and she's sitting on the other side of the gate waiting to come back in. She's soaking wet, which means she got all the way down to the pond and went swimming. And you know what? I don't blame her a bit. It's freaking hot. All right. So that's what I've been working on. And uh, I'm just, I'm trying to, trying to go through my list, my 2018 goals list and just get things done. Let's take a look at that, see how I'm doing. All right. So now we're taking a look at my goals list for 2018. And, um, I feel pretty good. We're not quite halfway through the year yet. It's still, uh, I guess it's the 22nd or 23rd of June. And number one is done. Number two, I crossed off because I was intimidated to even attempt to build a roof over my back deck. But after we got some additional experience doing the roof over the front deck, I may revisit that. Don't hold me to it, but I may. Uh, number three is done. We got the goats. Um, number four get the pigs to raise and process. That's going to happen, I think, in August or September, but uh, that's all but done. I got their pan in their house and everything finished. We finished the Hobby Farm website, and we're trying to attract some customers, printed flyers for the landscaping business, and got some customers. We built and planted a raised bed. I put plant a couple of raised beds. We got one done, and I'll probably end up doing another one next year because this one has gone pretty well. We're continuing to build good soil by composting. That's that's an ongoing thing, but I definitely have a great start on that. Set up the greenhouse. We did plant a kick-ass garden, guys, and I am learning from last year's mistakes, but I'm certainly making more this year. Built the gate on the driveway. We're going to check that, and I fenced off the, the rest of the property. Signage for the homestead. That's still on the burner, but it's on the back burner right now. And number 13, we can mark that off. God, it feels good to mark things off. So we got number 16 done, the biogas generator. And um, I don't know if you saw that video, if I uploaded it yet or not, but I have I have some clips that I got to put together if I haven't done it yet. Uh, the bees, we have been baiting the hive, the uh, swarm trap. So really the things that I'm going to do, oh, the corporate smackdown. I got that under my belt for... February. Taking time to smell the roses. Uh, gosh, that's one of those things where I'm constantly trying to slow down and, and just relax and do some fun stuff. And I'm struggling with it, but I have been getting out and doing some fishing down at the pond. And I feel like that's a small win. Uh, and you know what, going down to off grid acres, uh, generally I'm not doing a whole lot to work down there. I am just chilling out. And hopefully we get some more fun stuff in this year. Ethan and I want to go do another four-wheeler trip and have some fun that way as well. But I feel pretty good so far about the amount of things that I got crossed off my list. The next big thing after we get this front porch done is going to be to insulate the underside of the house. And I'm going to try to use that bubble foil, that radiant bubble foil that Boss of the Swamp used. used uh, and he, he did a bunch of videos on it and he swears by it. And I'm, I'm going to give it a try. I think uh, if I have a similar experience that he's had in the m multiple times that he's used it on different projects, I think I'll be happy with it. So that'll be in a future video, I hope. And um, 
the backyard patio, that's going to be something maybe we'll get to uh, later on this year, maybe the fall or the winter, but so far I feel pretty good. Well, hello there. <laughs> Whoa, I was out here by the greenhouse and I moved a pot and that was underneath it. I don't know what kind of spider that is. I think it's the first time I've ever seen one like it. Wow. That thing looks scary. You know, some of y'all have fear of snakes. I don't really fear snakes that much. At least not to the point that some of y'all do. But spiders creep me out a bit. Especially ones that look like that. It's like the assault rifle of the spider world. They're just fucking words!